where you like to hear this. Is Trevante Citizen starting to look like his old self again? You are Locked On Canes, your daily podcast on the Miami Hurricanes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Friday. We made it. I'm Alex Dono, University of Miami alumnus, longtime South Florida sports radio vet and writer for allhurricanes.com. Thank you so much to the everydayers for making Locked on Canes your first listen each and every day and your first watch. We're free wherever you get your podcasts. We're free on YouTube. We're part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. This episode is brought to you by Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further? Ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Check them all out today at NissanUSA.com. On this episode, uh, I do want to touch my friends on uh, some big weekend visits happening in Coral Gables, but also what's transpired in practice this past week. A freshman linebacker is standing out. Uh, a Now, I guess he's a third-year redshirt freshman running back who's starting to regain his old form. Real quick, here's what Mario Cristobal said yesterday about Trevante Citizen, who's missed the past two seasons with injury. Cristobal said this on Thursday. Something clicked with him today. We saw some flashes of his old self early in camp, but still a bit tentative. Today, something clicked. He's 230 pounds and catching the ball out of the backfield cleanly and running hard and behind his pads. Let's bring on our guest for today. Does an awesome job. I see him out there at practice. I'm going to lean on him today because I've been out of town for the last couple of practices. This man does an excellent job. He's the publisher at Canes County. That's the Miami rival site. Marcus Benjamin. Marcus, welcome in. How you doing, sir? I'm doing well, Dono. Uh, I hope you enjoyed your vacation. I did. I, I never enjoy like not being around when stuff is happening, but it's happy to get a few days off to recharge the batteries. So, Absolutely. Okay. Marcus, I'm sure you know you were there to listen to Mario Cristobal talk about Trevante Citizen. What have you seen from Trevante this past week, who's a guy that I think we're all really rooting for after all he's been through the last couple of years? To be honest with you, Dono, I mean, once spring kind of, you know, transpired here, you didn't really see a lot from Trevante Citizen. Um, I, I didn't really see the explosiveness that I saw from him, you know, on tape. We're kind of waiting for him to kind of return to form. So I, I think myself, like many of us, when we heard those words from Cristobal, we're quite surprised. We're, we're quite surprised that, okay, well, well, it, it's great to hear that something actually clicked for him and maybe he is mentally over the hump of his, of his injury, uh, tearing his ACL. So I, I just think, that that is really needed, <laughs> especially with the departures of, of a Henry Parrish and a Don Chaney and, you know, with Fletcher and A.J. Allen out of camp, you were hoping uh, to hear that Trevante Citizen was making a jump or making a leap here. And it was really refreshing to see as far as what we've seen on uh, from practice from him you haven't really seen much you know, because you know you know you know as much as anybody dono that you know we only see about maybe 15 minutes or so uh, of practice and you don't see much of uh you know full contact um uh, i think we've only had maybe two days of full pads that we've actually viewed uh so you you don't really see much explosiveness from a Trevante citizen. I saw some explosiveness from Christopher Johnson Jr. as well as Chris Wheatley Humphrey, but you really didn't see the explosiveness from Trevante citizen. So like I said, Dono, it comes as a pleasant surprise to kind of hear Crystal Ball say that Trevante, um, that something clicked for Trevante uh, yesterday. And I'm glad you brought up both the Chris's Wheatley Humphrey, the Hellcat, and Chris Johnson because yeah, their their reps have become more more and more prominent based on Fletcher and AJ Allen being out, and then after the first week of spring, Henry Parrish decided to transfer. So like Chris Johnson's been getting a lot of first team reps, and and so overall, when when we think about the departures in that room. Um, knowing yes, reinforcements will come because at some point, you know, 
Mark Fletcher and A.J. Allen are going to be healthy again. But do you think running back, is that a position you think Miami could be aggressive in in the transfer portal in a few weeks when it opens back up? I think you need to. I, I think you need to because Trevante Citizen, like we just spoke about, you know, is is still kind of feeling his way out, right? Um, and he is a big back, you know, which which is a positive, especially when it comes to blocking because what you really miss – in a Henry Parrish and, and a Mark Fletcher is not so much. I mean, yeah, you, you, you of course you miss their, their running ability here in spring. Um, but blocking is important. And AJ Allen, you know, he had some, you know, not so good games blocking as far as pass protection is concerned. And Trevante Citizen is a bigger back. So you're hopefully you're hoping that he can really be a good pass protector and really kind of take that step forward. So, yeah, I do think Miami has to go in the portal, uh, not not because that you kind of need depth, because I think Miami is pretty good depth wise. You know, uh, the two Chris's that that I just mentioned, Chris and Chris, and then you also have Jordan Lyle. Uh, coming in as well. You also have AJ Allen, Mark Fletcher, Trevante Citizen. Naming all those names, you think, okay, that's a loaded room. But you got, you know, two two coming off of injury, which, well, three basically coming off of injury if you count AJ Allen as well. But two that are really big backs. So I think Miami has to get a running back out of the transfer portal, especially because of pass protection. Mm, no, uh, yeah, uh, that's really well said. We're joined here by Marcus Benjamin from Canes County, Miami's rival site. He's the publisher of that site. Uh, switching to the other side of the football, uh, a player who earned a ton of praise from Thursday's practice, and it's definitely someone that I noticed the first couple of weeks of practice as well, is Bobby Pruitt, Cam Pruitt, early sure. enrollee linebacker, uh, had had a couple of interceptions in practice yesterday. Um, is this someone, first of all, what, what makes him stand out, Marcus? And is this someone you think is going to get on the field right away next year? He's explosive. He's just an explosive athlete. Uh, he will lay the wood. You know, he, when, if you watch this high school tape, you're just like, whoa, how does all of that power come from that body? Cause he's not, you know, a super big linebacker, but he is solid. And I, like Chris Ball said yesterday, he said he's physically gifted, so he's got the physical traits to really make an impact in a football game, as we saw in his high school tape and as we're seeing in spring practice. And I think he is going to make an impact on special teams like automatically. Um, you know, uh, that linebacker room is pretty deep right now, and it's going to be hard for him, I think, to see the field over, of course, the Kiko Maunoa, Wesley the Saint, and a, and a Popo Aguirre, who's really been excelling here in spring. Uh, the the other players, I, I guess, he would need to leapfrog would be a Marcellius Pulliam, uh, a Bobby Washington, who have made some 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 steps. I think not only from last year, but here in spring as well. Um, we've also heard positive things from. Uh, Darius Hayes as well. So that linebacker room is absolutely loaded. So I think he's definitely going to make an impact on special teams. Um, if, if there is a, an issue with attrition, uh, with injuries, then he could possibly see the field in year one. But you got to love what you're seeing already uh, from Bobby Pruitt, um, not only just with his physical ability, ability to just you know, put people on the ground, but also making plays in the passing game. It just it just speaks well to how Miami has really recruited uh, the position, um, because I don't think anybody truly expected him to be challenging for playing time with such a loaded room. Uh, but that's what we're seeing from Bobby Pruitt here in spring. 
And I, I want to talk about uh, another early enrollee freshman on the defensive side of the football who's been turning heads in Zaquan Patterson. And I also want to talk about the latest in the battle to be the backup quarterback. Uh, Cam Ward is uh, clearly uh, above the rest at this point, but I think there's a competition for who's going to be the number two. So, folks, you know what you want to do? We're only getting started. You want to keep it locked right here on this brand new episode of Locked on Canes. And I know you're keeping it locked to Manscaped. My friends, this episode is brought to you by the Spring Cleaning Champions, Manscaped. This season, make sure to groom your carpets and the drapes with the leaders in below-the-waist grooming. Clear out the winter bush with Manscaped's Lawnmower 5.0 and watch your confidence bloom like the springtime flowers. Embrace the season and join the 10 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with our special offer. Go to manscaped.com and use code Locked On for 20% off and free shipping. And yes, after using Manscaped, I can finally say I caught the spring fever. Introducing the season's champ, the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra. Their fifth generation trimmer features two interchangeable next-gen skin-safe blade heads, a standard one for taking a little off the top, and a new foil blade to go smooth wherever your heart desires. It also features dual LED spotlights to guide you through the darkest winter debris. Navigate with confidence in your delicate areas. This thing was designed by NASA, I think. If you hate making a mess, not to worry. This bad boy is waterproof. Shave in the shower, in the bath, or even in the ocean. Whether you're looking to craft your signature look or even clean up that neckline, these are always the right tools for the job. So get 20% off and free shipping with the code Locked On at manscaped.com that's 20 percent off and free shipping with the code locked on at manscaped.com nothing like a little spring cleaning in your pants my friends we are also brought to you by the awesome folks at better together i this has changed the way that i do fantasy and daily fantasy because i can play with my friends instead of against my friends we can cooperate we can help each other if you've got friends that are stat nerds and analytic guys like i do take advantage of those eggheads out there Guys, I'm having so much fun. If your brackets are busted, but you want to stay in the game, let's introduce Better Together, the first cooperative daily fantasy platform where teamwork trumps talent and you can play with your friends, not against them. You just pick more or less on real-time player stat stats, strategize with your partner to boost your odds, and then climb through that leaderboard together. So grab a friend and join the social DFS movement. Guys, this provides a sense of camaraderie, uh, and, you know, I, I've got friends that I'm in a group chat with all over the country. And if, even if we can't watch sports together physically, we can play better together and literally be better together. It helps me stay connected with my friends. So download Better Together now from the App Store and sign up using promo code Locked On for a free $5 entry into any NCAA basketball contest. Play with me in a contest on uh, on Friday. Remember the code Locked On because winning alone is fun, but it's better together. Thank you so much for making this Friday episode of Locked On Canes your first listen and your first watch today. I'm Alex Dono. He's Marcus Benjamin, publisher at CanesCounty.com. Uh, so, Marcus, another player who uh, who's been talked about a lot, Zaquan Patterson. Now. That, that clip that came out last week of him uh, kind of laying the shoulder onto Trevante Citizen, who we just talked about, you know, I, I saw like a lot of the comments from fans were like, you got to learn to wrap up. What is that? I'm pretty sure, Marcus, for context, I don't think they were allowed to wrap up and tackle to the ground. I think it was a thudding drill. Right. So laying that shoulder, I think, was the limit of what Zaquan, Zaquan was able to do. And he looked pretty powerful in doing that. And Zaquan Patterson. He's not just a guy who apparently stood out in that team drill. He's someone who's definitely stood out in these first three weeks of practices, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, he's a, He was a five-star by rivals for, for, for a while for a reason because he's a five-star thudder, <laughs> to be honest. I, I mean, he, <laughs> he, he, he knows how to, you know, put people in their place, uh, <laughs> you know, to put it lightly. Um, so I, I think – he is definitely what the Hurricanes need at that position. You definitely need some depth at safety uh, with, you know, of course, the departures of Cameron Kitchens and James Williams. To have him kind of waiting in the wings behind, you know, a, J uh, a Jaden Harris and, and a Michelle Powell and, and possibly, uh, you know, Savion Riley, 
Hurricanes fans have to be excited for, from what they see from Zaquan Patterson. He's always been a guy that's played close to the line, so he likes uh, the physicality. Very similar to James Williams uh, when he came out of high school. Uh, I think they have a very similar mentality when it comes to football and just their IQs as well. I, I think that Zaquan has a, a really high IQ, and he is a is a fierce competitor, a fierce, fierce competitor. He hates to lose. He hates to make mistakes. He he always wants to be his best self every time he's on the field. And that's that's what I've seen from him throughout his high school years at the powerhouse that we know as Shamanad Madonna. So really excited to see what Zaquan continues to bring uh, this spring. And I think Miami fans should should continue to anticipate uh, big thuds like they saw on social media. Let's talk quarterbacks. Let's start with Cam Ward, because I know that the expectations have gotten to be so high among Miami fans. And, you know, I've when, when I'm out there watching practices and I, I try to tell people how good Ward has looked, you know, some fans are happy to hear it. Other fans are like, yeah, but you, you guys used to hype up Tyler Van Dyke. I'll, I'll see it when I believe it. I'm tired of, of the sunshine pumping. So, uh, I, I'd like your perspective as well, because we've watched, you know, Ward wearing that number one jersey out there for the past few weeks, leading drills, I think throwing a, a very nice football. The release looks really good. The accuracy. What have you seen from Ward? And do you think this guy could be, you know, the the legit step up from the quarterback situation we've had the last few years? Yeah, quarterback play is kind of hard to judge in spring and like in practice because obviously you can't hit the quarterback. Uh, a lot of the throwing that we see is in a net or it's it's sometimes it's routes on air uh, where it's not in coverage. So um, you don't see them really kind of handling pressure or situational football is not what we see at least um, during practice. So it's kind of hard to kind of judge that. But from what I see from him – is the leadership aspect. Um, you kind of see him um, barking at guys, I guess you could say a little bit, uh, or really kind of commanding the receivers on on route running and kind of where to be and as far as timing is concerned. So it tells me that he has a full command of the offense, and he's a mature guy who really will elevate his team with his leadership abilities. And I'm not sure if we saw that level at the quarterback position for Miami in these past couple of years. Uh, so it's, it's, it's really kind of nice to see that as far as his mechanics and, and delivery. I mean, it's 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 on point uh, for for me. I think um, a lot of the times, sometimes I, I see him throwing off balance, but still accurate. So I, I, I I'm really excited to kind of see him improvise in the pocket and really kind of make plays off script because you know, as well as anybody Dino that, you know, that's really what makes quarterbacks great, you know, is their ability to improvise their ability to make plays off script and also their ability to really kind of recognize defenses and blitz packages. I think we've didn't see a lot of that, um, you know, from the, from the previous years as well. Um, the other last thing I would say about Cam Ward is that I feel like he's really developing a nice chemistry with Xavier Restrepo and Jacoby George, as well as, as uh, Zay Horton as well. I, I think uh, those obviously are the top three guys at receiver for Miami. And he seems to really just get the timing right from what I've seen in practice with those three guys in particular. So Really excited to really see him in an actual game setting. Of course, you know, we'll, we'll see him in spring, but we all know that spring is kind of, you know, kind of preseason football, I guess you could say, <laughs> um, for the college game. So you're not really going to see what you would expect so much in in, in a actual football game, but it's going to be close enough to where we can, you know, uh, have a better opinion on – what he'll actually do on Saturdays. And I like the context you frame it in when it comes to judging the quarterback position in spring. There's so much of it you don't see 
facing pressure, improvisation. And uh, I, I've always felt that just watching drills is, is not the best way to judge a guy like Jakari Brown because he he is so big and physical. Uh, and there, there's so many things he could do in an actual game he doesn't have the opportunity to do in drills. Uh, but, you know, maybe that can also be said for Reese Poffenbarger because when I watch Reese Poffenbarger's film at Albany, there, there's definitely, you know, he, he moves around a lot. There is some improvisation there. Uh, so, you know, we're not getting the full context when we judge these guys. Now, with that said, it has appeared, at least in the first couple of weeks, for what it's worth, Poffenbarger was maybe getting reps ahead of Jakari Brown in a lot of situations. I've seen really positive moments from both, Marcus. Who who stood out to you more this past week? Uh, did, did you think uh, Poffenbarger or Jakari had a better week when it comes to that competition for number two quarterback? Once again, it's hard to judge here, uh, but it's this competition, I think, is the most interesting and most intriguing for me in spring, uh, just yeah. because you, you got guys, all, all of the guys in there have experience, except for Judd, obviously. Um, he's uh, the quarterback waiting in the wings. Uh, but Emery has some game experience. You got Jakari Brown with some game experience, and, of course, Reese Poffenbarger with some game experience as well. From a physical standpoint, this is a kind of a no-brainer, right? Um, you know, Jakari Brown is, is, is the guy that you want out there. He's built like, you know, like a tight end almost um, as, as as far as his physical attributes are concerned. So just from that alone, you feel like his floor is like a Malik Rozier, right? <laughs> you feel like that's that's kind of like his floor, which is kind of high praise, especially for Hurricanes fans, because that was the last time the Hurricanes won 10 games when Rozier was at the helm. So for me, I, I think if it is a tie, right, it, if it is like, you know, a, a tie across the board, then I think you got to go with Jakari Brown, you know, um, you know, because of his physical attributes I'd rather have a guy like him uh, running the football, making plays off script than possibly a Reese Poffenbarger. Jakari Brown actually played against, you can argue has played against better competition in his college career than Reese Poffenbarger has. So I think, yeah, if, if it's a wash, would it, which it kind of feels like it is Dono <laughs> at, at this point, because there there's been times where I've seen both, or all quarterbacks underthrow and overthrow balls. Like I said, we don't see a lot of, you know, um, you know, quarterback play at all. Um, sometimes they uh, hit the target at the net and sometimes they don't. And um, as far as the other, the other aspect you can judge is, is, is footwork. And I think, you know, all three of those guys are, are really good at footwork. I think Poffenbarger and Brown, I think are ahead um, in my opinion, of Emery when it comes to footwork, I think Emery's maybe still, you know, coming back from the injury. Um, uh, so maybe that's a factor for him. For him. Uh, I do think those two guys are ahead of Emery at this point, just from, just from what I see. And like I said, if it's a wash, then I believe Jakari Brown should be the guy. And the other thing that I'm thinking aloud here is if it if it is a wash, like you said, I also think there, there's value in sticking with the guy who's been here for the past few years that you've actually been developing. Like, I, I don't maybe, maybe I'm just and, and I'm not against the transfer portal or anything like that. But I, I to me, there's got to be some value placed in like Jakari has been here through multiple offensive coordinators. He's been here working hard, developing in our facility. So I, I do think there's some value in maybe rewarding him and also rewarding your own coaches for working with this guy for the last few years. Yeah, absolutely. Um, stick stick with the guy that stuck with you uh, because yeah. Larry Brown basically had a chance to jump in the transfer portal, chose to stay, chose to play uh, in the bowl game because it was <laughs> Miami really didn't have any other choice. Um, but still, after the bowl game, chose to stay. He still continues to stick with the program. Uh, first time for him where he will have an offensive coordinator for the second year in a row with Shannon Dawson. So, yeah, I, I think that does have some value to it. And with all that being said, then you got to kind of think about Reese Poffenbarger, who, yeah. you know, has another year 
of eligibility left after this one. So possibility that he could stay uh, for the following year to uh, to be the starter. But if he's jumped over by uh, by uh, Jakari Brown, then of course he'll have something to think about. It's it's the the way of the world of college football uh, these days. So Miami brought in Poffenbarger with the idea of him being the starter. And, you know, of course, Cam Ward decided to renege on going to the NFL, <laughs> um, to put it lightly. So he obviously is going to be the starter. So Reese is, is in a, you know, a precarious situation uh, right now if he is unable to win the backup role. So I do believe that if a guy is here um, and is in his second year with the system, I think there's value in that rather than bringing a guy in who is learning uh, the system and, um, like I said before, has played against lesser competition. Well, we got Marcus Benjamin with us, publisher at Canes County. That's Miami's rival site, so you know he covers recruiting extensively. Miami's got one of the most important visitors in the country who's on campus now through the weekend. So you want to keep it locked right here, my friends. We're not done yet on this brand new episode of Locked on Canes. My friends, this week's March Madness bracket highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out. A team that's pushed it further than the rest, just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs. These guys were able to take it to the next level. The Yukon Huskies can only be described as an armada. This one seed is as hardcore as it gets out there, so it's no wonder they secured a spot in the Elite Eight and will battle Illinois in that Elite Eight for a chance to play in the Final Four yet again. They're a favorite picked by many to make a run for the championship this year, so take the Nissan Rogue nissan pathfinder or that nissan armada and go find your next big adventure shop nissanusa.com thank you so much for making this friday episode of locked on canes your first listen and your first watch today for the locked on canes insiders i'm back in town blowing up your phones with updates if you guys want to try the locked on canes insiders chat two weeks for free Click that link in the show description below. You get text messages directly from my phone to yours with practice updates, recruiting scoops, breaking news, one-on-one -on -one questions and answers, all that good stuff. Click the link in the show description below. Become a Locked on Canes insider. Try it free for 14 days. And then if you like it, you can opt in for $4.99 a month. We give you a lot of added value on there at Locked on Canes Insiders. Uh, so here, here's a treat uh, for the insiders, whether you're a, a fanboy at – Miami rivals, or you love locked on canes, hopefully both. Marcus <laughs> Benjamin. So Miami's got uh, DJ Pickett back on campus this weekend. Uh, he's been down here a lot. You know, his cousin Booker Pickett is uh, is joining Miami and rolling this summer. And DJ is one of the top players in the state of Florida, if not the top five star cornerback. Um, how's Miami looking in this recruitment? Because I know LSU and Oregon have also trended positively, and Miami has the factor of a recent cornerbacks coach change because I know Jamil Adai was heavily recruiting this young man and now it's Chavis Jackson doing that. So where do you think Miami stands? Yeah, I think Miami's still relatively in the same spot here with uh, DJ Pickett, although Jamil Adai has now left for the NFL for the Buffalo Bills. He was the guy, the, the, the main guy for DJ Pickett as far as recruiting him. And um yeah, I think he really bonded with him last barbecue, um, you know, during the summer, they have that barbecue. And I think he really bonded with a die since then. So I, I think naturally there is a, a regression, I guess you, you could say just because of the, the coaching departure, but most people know that the defensive coordinator for Miami Lance Gidry is basically the safeties coach and he's still there. <laughs> um, so, and I, I think what Miami has going for them with Gidry, of course, staying is the fact that he developed a Cameron Kitchens and a James Williams to go to the NFL. We're expecting both of those guys names to be called 
in the upcoming draft, which which I think is exactly a month away. Uh, so with and if you think about it, Dono, like when they tested out at the combine, right, uh, they didn't test the best. Let's just say that to put it lightly. Right. right. <laughs> they didn't test the best. So what does that tell you? It tells you that, OK, well, the coaches at Miami really got the most out of these safeties. They got the most out of these safeties to really develop them into professionals. You know, I think you kind of saw that with Cameron, obviously, uh, from the All-American season. Um, but I think maybe, you know, some thought that there would be some regression from an All-American season. But I think his season, although he had less interceptions, I think he, you know, had just as good a season in, in his final season. And, it, and that was with missing a couple of games last year. And And James Williams, I think, is really – something that you can hang your hat on just how he really developed as a leader, um, his IQ of the game and just, you know, what, what he did for this team last year, leading in the, leading the team in tackles. So I think just that from a development standpoint, because obviously with a five-star guy, well, what are they thinking? Who's the team that can develop me to the highest level to take me to the next level? Um, and of course, yeah, but his cousin Booker Pickett is is certainly a factor here. And the fact that they play young guys and you can, you know, basically play your way onto the field is is another factor here uh, for DJ Pickett. So, yeah, I think this weekend is a big weekend because it's it's a it's a moment for. Chevis Jackson to really establish the relationship with DJ Pickett. But I don't think Miami really kind of left this race entirely at all. You can never really count Miami out in any situation, even if he does commit to another school, because we've seen Miami flip guys like Justin Scott and Armando Blunt, who many thought would stick with their commitments. So I think even if DJ Pickett decides to commit early, which I don't expect to, um, I, I think Miami still will always have a chance here because of Booker Pickett uh, already on, uh, you know, uh, s signed with the program and the fact that Miami has developed safeties uh, to the NFL. Well, I, I love it. Great insight here from Marcus Benjamin. You want to follow him on X at Benjamin Rivals and check out his work at canescounty.com. The guys are doing a great job there, have an awesome crew. Marcus, thank you so much, man, and enjoy your weekend coming up. Oh, I appreciate it. Of course, I'll be at uh, UM, uh, uh, you know, checking out what recruits are, are out there on Saturday uh, all day. So, you know, definitely visit canescounty.com for the latest on recruiting news through the weekend. I love it. We'll talk to everyone next time. By the way, we're not done today. We might have good. I, I've been out of town the last three days. We might have three episodes today. Uh, Brian Smith is going to join us at some point. Don Bailey Jr. We might save DBJ for tomorrow, but man, we're going to be loaded today. Part of the awesome Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.